This is part two of my CC3D and transmitter tutorial series. And if you have not checked out part one, where I go over the setup of the CC3D with LibrePilot, make sure to check out the description for the link to that video. In this video, I'll be going over the setup of the transmitter in order to actually manually fly with the quadcopter. So let's get started. So now the flight controller is completely set up. However, we still need to set up the transmitter and receiver so that we can properly communicate with the flight controller. So with this, um, we're going to go through this transmitter setup wizard. Um, this is just a notification indicating that the flight controller and the quadcopter are going to be disarmed during the entire process. And what, that's, what that means is that you can't accidentally turn on the motors, so it's a good safety feature. So what we're going to do here is just going to follow us, uh, it's lead us through several prompts um, for our transmitter. So you can go ahead and click next. And up here in this top left corner, we have the option of selecting the mode of the transmitter. Uh, I'm just going to select this acro mode. It's pretty much standard mode for flying uh, quadcopters um, or also fixed wing um, planes, it seems. So go ahead and get, uh, click next. So in this section, this is really going to be dependent on how you prefer to fly. There are several modes. Um, for each transmitter, mode two is a really common one as well as mode one. And what this means is it basically determines which channels refer to which physical actions of your transmitter. So in mode two, if you move uh, this, uh, this stick up and down, that's gonna refer to throttle. If you go left and right, that's gonna be a yaw turn. Um, and then here you've got a pitch and then you've got roll. So that's from mode two, that's how I fly. That's pretty common in the US. Mode one is more a European thing, I believe. So basically here, um, just select which configuration you've used before. If you're a totally new beginner, I'd recommend mode two just because, um, I don't know, it was super easy for me to pick up. So you can select that here. So once you've selected your mode, go ahead and turn on your transmitter. Make sure you get some kind of indication that your transmitter is on. And also check that your receiver is actually bound to your transmitter. In this next step, I'm just going to follow the on-screen animations and move all of my sticks as shown. What this is doing is mapping the physical sticks to the flight controller, um, what it's expecting as inputs, just to make sure that everything is set up correctly. I also have this stick that I'm going to toggle a few times. And in the animation, there are these four accessories. I don't have those on my transmitter, so I'm just going to skip those. And now go ahead and center all of your sticks. In this next step, just make sure uh, to move all of your sticks kind of randomly, um, just to make sure that they're following your physical command as shown in the animation. So as you can see, I can make this nice square and it follows what I was actually inputting. So everything, you've, everything done so far is correct. Um, so for this next step, what you can do is also check and see that, uh, make sure nothing's reversed. So in this case, if I move throttle up, and the animation also moves up, so that's good. Same if I go left and right, up and down as well, and then here left and right. Um, just to show you what would be the case if they reversed, if I check this throttle, as I'm going down, on the animation I'm actually going up. So that means that this channel's reversed. So just check or uncheck these top four uh, depending on uh, if any of yours are reversed. So in this step, this is a just a final check and we can basically verify that all of our sticks move accordingly. So if I go up and down, left, right, up, down, left, right, that all looks good. So that was the kind of the final setup of the transmitter. Now there's more some safety features that we have to do. So with a quadcopter or any multi-rotor or RC, um, or say vehicle, you should have some kind of safety mechanism. And a common one is just an arm and disarm switch. So uh, if you don't know what that means, basically what it is is that if a vehicle is disarmed, then the motors aren't gonna spin up randomly and you don't risk them kind of randomly turning on. However, if something is armed, that means that your motors are ready to go, you can take off, but um, they're basically live. You can look at it that way. So in order to prevent them from randomly turning on, we have this arming um, setting or this arming 
action that we need to perform to um, actually turn on and allow access to our motors. So for this flight controller, what it's stating is that you can arm the airframe using the throttle off and then uh, another action. So what throttle off means is that the throttle, whichever channel is your throttle, is all the way down and you select another action. Um, I've just always done roll left and what this means is that uh, this stick in mode two is all the way to the left. So that means that if I turn my quadcopter on, I power on the battery, then I perform this action, it'll actually arm my quadcopter and then I'll be able to fly. There's also this arming timeout of 10 seconds of the default value. And what that means is that if you've armed your quadcopter and you're just kind of uh, standing around not doing anything, after 10 seconds, it's gonna automatically disarm itself. So that's a good thing because if you accidentally arm it, whatever, you're not paying attention, you don't want a live vehicle sitting there that can really damage itself and people around it. And then the last sentence basically states that if you're done flying, what you can do is perform the reverse action of your arming. So throttle down and now roll right. And that's gonna disarm the vehicle. So go ahead and save that. So now that the setup of the flight controller is complete, I'm just gonna quickly show you what the arming and disarming process looks like. So I've disconnected my flight controller from my computer. I have my transmitter powered on, receivers connected, and I've got power to my quadcopter. So in order to um, dis, or sorry, it's in order to arm it, I'm gonna do throttle down, roll left. And right there you can see that quick flashing of the lights indicating that it's been armed and it's now live. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wait a few more seconds um, in order to reach that 10 second limit. And now as you see, as I move the throttle up, nothing happens because automatically it's disarmed itself. But that's not interesting. Let's uh, actually arm it this time. So I can go ahead and arm it, see the flashing, and then spin it up. So can't see anything because no propellers, but hopefully you can hear uh, the propellers on right now. And just to be safe, throttle down, roll right. You're gonna see a solid blue light indicating that um, the quadcopter is disarmed. That wraps up part two of my CC3D flight controller tutorial series. In this series, I showed you how to configure the flight controller with LibrePilot, as well as set up the transmitter in order to manually fly the quadcopter. If you have any questions about this video, make sure to drop those in the comments below. Now that my quadcopter is fully set up and configured, I'm gonna pop on a GoPro and film a lot of cool FPV footage. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so they get notified for a lot of cool videos. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for those FPV videos.